Today's guest is Shelly Lefko. She's the co-founder of the Lefko Institute. It's a San Francisco Bay Area firm whose mission is to significantly improve the quality of life on the planet. She's such an amazing speaker. I listened to her before and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this woman so much. And she's just going to, yeah, you're just, it's just, she's one of those people you just fall in love with as soon as she starts talking. Uh, so she has helped thousands of clients worldwide recreate their lives by ridding themselves of a wide variety of problems, including phobias, relationships that never seem to work, violence, procrastination, unwillingness to confront people, health and wellness issues, and sexual dysfunction. Her clients have eliminated emotional patterns such as fear, hostility, shyness, anxiety, depression, worry, and uh, what people think about them and a negative sense of themselves. Her programs have reached over 150,000 people worldwide, her, and her work has been featured on The Today Show, Lisa, and many other media outlets. She's an in international keynote speaker and workshop leader, um, and she is just incredible. Make sure you find her on social media as well as Shelly Lefko, that's L-E-F-K-O-E, -E, and Shelly is just with a Y, not E-Y. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to get all into beliefs and what is going on under the beliefs, where these beliefs come from and how you can shift them. She's such a treat. Let's go ahead and jump in. Here is Shelly Lefko. All right, Shelly. So excited to have you on today talking about confidence, getting to some of these reasons that we hold ourselves back and these stories that we have inside of ourselves. Can you share with us how, how did you get on this path? Oh, all right. So thanks for having me, Tara. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. Um, so my husband was on what he called, my late husband, was what he on what he called a spiritual intellectual journey to find out why people knew what to do, yeah. what not to do, and didn't do it. And he looked in his own life and things that should have turned out just weren't turning out. And he was on a plane going to California. And he was journaling. And what is it that has people now I'm telling you, I'm going back 35 years, because today, everybody, not, not everybody, but a lot of people know what I'm about to say. But at this point, no one did. Mm. So he comes up with the premise that he had the belief, what makes me, me, what makes me good enough is overcoming obstacles. Because that's what he always got acknowledged for. He had a right. very tough childhood and he overcame things. And people would say, wow, you're so strong. You're so resilient. So if you believe what makes me good enough is overcoming obstacles, you're going to create obstacles right. to overcome. Right. So on this trip, in these hours of notes, lived this process. And it, and because he had no ego, uh, he says he downloaded it, uh, but he it it comes from the premise that our all of our behavior and emotions come from our mostly unconscious beliefs. Yes. Now, when again, thirty five years ago, people used to say belief. You mean like a religious belief? Like what do you mean beliefs? Right. So I have a book coming out <laughs> about this. But a belief is a statement about reality that we hold as the truth. I believe it. So it's not wishy-washy. It's not me. Right. I believe this is so. So he comes home from California. He says, I have to show you what, what, what I just came up with. This is amazing. So he sits down with uh, an old friend and she says, I, so we start with a pattern and a pattern is something you can observe. I procrastinate. I stress all the time. I'm not happy. Um, I don't stand up for myself. So those are seeable. Those are the patterns. That's what you want to change. Beliefs are a means to an end. So the beliefs underlie and cause those patterns. So she says, I want to, I want to get married. I want to, you know, get married and have children. And I, you know, so he says, okay, well, what do you believe about marriage? And she goes, oh, well, marriage is suffocating and you have to give yourself, <laughs> you have to completely give up yourself and your desires. And then she says, and men are selfish and men only, and bleh, <laughs> it's like vomiting. <laughs> these beliefs. And he picked one belief and he had her eliminated. And I use my words 
very carefully, eliminate as in gone forever. So she eliminates the belief, Tara, I'm sitting on the chair watching this. And makes me cry. I have my whole body. I've never had an experience like this before or since. I almost got whacked off the chair. Wow. And I, it, and I heard this voice say, that is what you are on this planet wow. to do, Shelly. That's awesome. And it just came through me. Mm. And I've been doing it for mm. over 35 years. And I'm never not in awe of mm. the power. Mm-hmm. I love this so much. I mean, this changed my life. I, I love that you talk about how a belief is like what we think is the truth, you know, on social media a lot. Like I, I, I admit it. Sorry guys, if you're somebody who commented this on social, but when people say like, uh, I love that you speak the truth and I'm like, not really. I just speak my version of the truth and that could change at any minute. <laughs> Beautiful. And you yeah. know, for me, it's like becoming aware of these stories. This is, you know, I, I apologize to you because I was a few minutes late for our podcast because I was just doing this with a client, like those beliefs. It's like, I, it, maybe you've noticed the same thing. People punish themselves with these labels, right? Like there's something wrong with me. Like I'm a procrastinator. This one, I'm like, this is the meanest thing to call yourself. It is like, what? No, 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 no. The only reason you're procrastinating it is because the subconscious beliefs that you're holding about that thing have more negatives and positives, just like this girl with marriage. Yeah. If you believe men are horrible and men are just suffocating, like, <laughs> I wonder yeah. what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. So now you've been, you've been doing this forever. I can't wait to hear more stories and what you've learned over this journey. So what are some of the most common subconscious beliefs or however you refer to it that hold people back? Yeah. Um, great question. So there actually are now here's the fun thing. I started off, I used to do sessions in person. Then I started doing them on the phone. Now I have Zoom. Mm -hmm. I have client, I have a new client in Saudi Arabia. Cool. It's like I know, isn't it cool? It's so cool. (laughs) And then you get cultural beliefs, and that's a whole other ball game. But here's the here's my point. Wherever people are, and we have a product called Natural Confidence, which I'll talk about later. So you could just do it. You don't have to do it with me. You can do it on video, Uh blah, blah, blah. But no matter where people come from, they have the same beliefs. And here are the five most most common. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I'm not important. Mistakes and failures are bad. If I make a mistake or fail, I'll be rejected. And here is the one that changed my life. What makes me, now I'll I'll talk about the two different kinds of beliefs in a minute, but what makes me good enough is having other people think well of me. Mm. Now there's another one very similar. What makes me good enough are my achievements, which is workaholism. Right. Right. I don't know my wife. I don't, I, I don't know my kids. My wife's ready to divorce me. I'm worth $10 million. Shelly, when is it going to be enough? Never. Because your achievements don't make you good enough. And we'll, I really want to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But I just want to explain one thing. Mm-hmm. So you're probably going to ask me this. Is it okay if I answer it for <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you roll or you, you, you know, you've been okay. doing this a minute. Okay. So here's how beliefs get formed. And then I'll explain the two okay. different kinds. We come into this world, Tara, as this little ball of consciousness. And we don't know if we're good enough or not good enough. We don't know if we're important or not important. We don't know if money is scarce and hard to get. We don't know if life is easy or hard. Yeah. So we show up. And we look around and we either have a mom and a dad or two moms or two dads or one parent. And the one, so every child alive wants three things, affection, attention, and acknowledgement. Yeah. And when I ask, what is the one word question every child asks all day long? What's the one word question? That every child, like, who am I? No, no, one what word. A oh, one word? One word question. Why? So, why? why? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Why? 
So I want, can I do a little exercise? Yes, please. Audience? Yes. Right, everybody close your eyes. Now you're a little girl or boy and you run to your mom and your dad and you say, mommy, daddy, look what I did. Look what I did. I, I painted, I, I painted this picture and they go, oh, it's really pretty, but you colored out of the lines. You know, you got to be careful. You got to stay in the lines. And you go, okay. And then the next day you run into your room and you mom's in there and you go, mommy, look, look, I cleaned my room. And she says, yeah, but you didn't put your, this ball in the corner is still here and your bed, look at your bed. Let me show you how to do this. At some point, I'll give you one more. You're at you're at your little soccer game and you come off and you go, Daddy, I scored a goal. And he said, Yeah, if you would have been paying attention the whole game, you could have scored another game, a goal. So I want everybody to listen to the little voice in your head. What do you think you would conclude at some point? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. That is the single reason why I created, which we're not going to talk about today, but a parenting course, Mm. because parents don't understand how these beliefs are formed. So we come into this world and if, listen, and everybody, this is my soapbox. So listen to this, what I'm going to say to you. If you're looking at your phone while your child is talking to you, they are going to conclude I'm not important or what I have to say is not important. Yeah, right. And because they think they are seeing that in the world, our beliefs stay with us throughout our entire lives. Mm -hmm. I saw that I wasn't good enough. No, you saw your parents criticize you. You saw failing a subject in school, but I'm not good enough. Doesn't have a color, shape, or location. You can't see that. Yeah. But because it is impossible to not believe something you think you saw, beliefs stay with us. I saw Santa Claus. I'm eight years old and there... Mm -hmm. He has a red suit and a white beard. I there's a Santa Claus. Right. And then one day you go, wait a minute, that's my dad. There's no Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Gone. Yeah. And if it weren't for people like you bringing this forward to people, like no one ever, no one says, Hey, 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 just want to let you know, let's go back to when you were a child and, uh, your, your mom made some suggestions on cleaning your room. You picked up a belief that, you know, it's not like you, your older brother being like, Hey, Santa Claus isn't real. Like, no, you, it's some people, I'm um, so many people just go through their whole lives, never even addressing that moment. So this work that you're doing is so important. And I love that you made a parenting course. Cause that's, that is that's normal parenting. Like where that's how all of us were parented. That's how most people are still parenting is I got to teach you how to be, I got to teach you how to be a better person, you know, (laughs) do not be, I wish it was, I got to teach you how to be. It's I got to teach you how to do. You have to be a human doing, not a human, sorry, you were a human being. You are not a human doing, Mm, you know, this belief what makes me good enough are my achievements. So let me just talk about this because I want to tell you something about uh, one of my favorite stories because I think it's powerful. Mm. Here's a belief. So now I come into this world and I form the belief I'm not good enough. If I'm ignored and I don't get attention, I'm going to form the belief I'm not important. That happens in the first six to eight years. Now, one day, I score a goal. And my dad or my mom says, wow, you scored a goal. That's awesome. And then I get an A and they go, oh, you got an A. That's fabulous. I'm so, that's wonderful. And you feel good enough. Mm. So again, the belief gets formed. I didn't feel good enough. I achieved something and then I felt good enough. I guess what makes me good enough is achieving things. Right. Now I have a beach ball. 
called I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I've got to hold that underwater. So I get a good job and I make a lot of money and then I become the CEO and then I make a million dollars and this is still going like this. Mm -hmm. Because every time your success is threatened or mm -hmm. you have a failure or something happens, up in your face pops, I'm not good enough. So survival strategy beliefs are driven. You mm -hmm. can't not, you could read books and they say, if you don't stay home with your kids, you know, but, you, but you, mm -hmm. I worked with workaholics who, who said to me, the belief I'm not important or I'm not good enough. They get rid of it. And I said, what may, so where did you get the belief that you're not important? And they say, well, then, they, and they're workaholics. They call me to work on it because they can't stop. Hmm. What, where'd you get the idea? I'm not important. And they said, oh, well, my father was never around when I was a kid. <laughs> oh my God, I'm doing the same thing to my kid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because they have the belief I'm not important, it doesn't occur to them that their presence is important to another. Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. Cause I was thinking about that when you're talking about the human doing right, like this moment of trauma for the kid, when they're like, just trying to talk to you and I have four kids. Right. So th there are definitely moments where it's like, I've got three kids trying to talk to me at the same time. And I'm like, I have to be like, Hey guys, I want to listen to all of you. I can't hear all of you at one time. So like, let's take turns, you know, but like it's in the thick of it day in and day out. It gets crazy sometimes. Right. And I'm sure there have been many times that little Micah was trying to say something. I didn't even hear him talking because two other kids were talking, you know, and, and so um, I think it's, it's it, for me, I, I think of all the moments, especially when I was younger and I was less aware of like, oh, I'm trying to be this perfect mom, right? I'm trying to keep the house clean and do all the laundry and have all the snacks made and blah, blah, blah. And it's like that, I mean, the human doing right in this pattern, and then they're picking it up of, I don't matter. And then, you know, I'm projecting all that crap onto them of like, oh, good job when you do stuff. And it just keeps going and going. And going. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And it goes from generation. And I yeah. love what you said. I want to hear from you and I can't listen to everyone all at once. Yeah. That's different than ignoring the child yeah. or, or busy or not now, or I can't, I always teach, you know, my, my parenting thing is mostly about beliefs, but I teach skills and tools as well. And it's mm. what you have to say to me is very important. And I can't listen right now. Yeah. That's very good. Then the kid could walk away. They're still crying and unhappy, but they're not walking away concluding I'm not important. Right. It, like the phone thing. I, them. I, oh, sorry. I, I used to do, I totally would be like in the middle of something. I'd be like, uh-huh. Yep. I, I fully admit. And then I learned and I, I have had conversation with them about the, conversations with them about, I'm like, okay, this is what I've learned. Sometimes I'm in right in the middle of something. Like I'm deep in a process and you come in. And so what I'm going to do is tell you, give me one second to finish this sentence. Hang on, hang on. I want to hear you. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish this real quick. Okay. And then I can put it down and talk to you. Right. So we've had to communicate that. <laughs> And that has helped a lot. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So now I want to finish the, this. Yes, please. Thread. So all of the people who believe what makes me good enough are my achievements, right? We're all becoming human doings. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband died. And I had a last minute, like I, we were going to do it later, but my, I have a daughter in Hawaii. And she said, mom, let's just do it. So I said, okay. So we had a hundred people at a memorial at my house. And here's what they said. He was the most loving man I ever met. Mm. He was so present mm. that when you talk to him, you always felt like the most important person mm. in the world. He was non judgmental. Mm. Two people said, I knew him 40 years and I never heard him say a bad word about anybody. Wow. What I loved about Morty was how much he loved Shelly. And then my daughter stood up and she said, I not only knew I was loved unconditionally every day of my life but to never feel judged. Wow. That was my father. Mm. They talked about who he was. 
-hmm. not the three books he wrote, not the right. process he created, right. not the whatever, all, you know, he went to the mm -hmm. University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. No one gives a rat's ass about right. your accomplishments. They may admire them and say, wow, that's wonderful. Cool. <laughs> yeah, That's cool. But in the next moment, it's right. what else you got. Right. I love that so much. You know, I, um, I, I read the conscious parent. You're probably familiar with that book as well. Dr. Shafali. And I've, you know, kind of been on a thing with this and it's, it's even the, like saying good job, like to my kid or, or like, congratulate, like, I, I don't feel comfortable with that anymore. I'm kind of like, um, okay. Okay. It's just, it's more of just being with them along their journey versus making judgments about whether they're choosing in their path. If this is a good or a bad thing, like that is huge. Like saying that about your husband, your daughter saying that about your husband, her dad is like so powerful. Cause I've noticed that since I've shifted out of that, I'm like, that energy is gross. Like, Hey mom, I'm going to try out for soccer. Oh, wow. That's so cool of you. That's it's, that's weird. The energy is weird, right? Like making a judgment. No, oh, are you sure? Because football is, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, cool. Let me know how it goes. Like, do you need anything? <laughs> I, I love this Tara. You know, here's, I wasn't going to talk about parenting, but <laughs> obviously, yeah. if you can get rid of four words as a parent, good, bad, right, wrong. Yeah. Throw them yeah. out. Talk about what works and what doesn't work. When you hit your sister, did that work? Did you look at her face that. and she was in pain? Does that work? I you love that. You didn't share your toys with your friend and he went home crying. Did that work? You I love that. You want to come back? You know, but it's a question. It's yeah. really clean. Super question. good. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for that tip. Okay. okay let's I'll give you one, one more Ooh, before yes. you get to the next, because yes. I can't not give this to you. Thank you. We told our kids, no matter what you do, somebody's not going to like it, but you may not. Sorry, let me back up for a second. The belief that ran my life and everybody listening probably can relate to this. Well, most of you. What makes me good enough is having other people think well of me. Right. I have seen people throw their children under a bus because a stranger might think well, not think well of them and, and yell at you, get sit that right now, stop going. Right. You know? Right. So when we're worried about what other people think, we can't be our authentic self. Right. When I got rid of this belief and you know it, whether it's Mind Valley or, you know, in Croatia, Mind Valley, there were six, I spoke in front of 600 people. Mm -hmm. When I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm good enough. Uh, you mm -hmm. can give me feedback. I'm open to growth. I'm always right. open to seeing and learning, but I'm good enough mm -hmm. no matter what, right? I got rid of that belief. Now, where's my focus? If I'm good, my focus is on you. Right. My focus is on serving. I no longer right. have to worry, oh, what is she thinking? He's sleeping and he's looking at his phone and, you know, right. no, I'm just there to serve, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so we told our kids, no matter what you do, somebody's not going to like it. So you may as well do what you want. However, before you do anything, stop and ask yourself. What might the consequences be of my actions? Yeah. And do I want to live with those consequences? Right. So when my daughter went to a party in high school at the top of the hill, no cell service, um, she found out that the designated driver had two drinks. Mm. And she she came home and she said, Mom, you're going to be very happy. I said, why? She said, because I didn't ask, what will they think if I get out of the car? I asked, what will the consequences be if I stay in? That's awesome. That's so good. I love that. And it goes all the way to, to, to toddlers, that question you're asking of like, well, how's that going to work for you? What thinking ahead of like what you're getting out of the choices that you're making versus good, bad, black, white, good girl, bad girl type stuff. Like that is so beneath us. I love all of that so much. And that kind of goes into the mistakes and failures 
thing, right? That very black and white. Can you elaborate on the mistakes and failures or bad, what you've seen behind this story, this belief people have? Yes. So most of us listening, except if you're millennials, were raised in an industrial world, right? Most people worked in factories and over the year, and, and in a factory, like our schools were, were created, were designed to teach us how to work in a right. factory. <laughs> in a factory, in an industrial world, if you make a mistake, you could screw up the assembly line right. or cut, cut off your finger. So that was not a good thing. Do we live in an, in an industrial <laughs> world anymore? Of course not. Right. In an information age, if you are not being innovative, you're never going to be successful. So right. everybody listen. I had a client recently, I'm going to tell you this. He calls me up. He said, Shelly, my boss just came in and said, if I don't take more risks and make more mistakes, he's going to fire me. And I can't. I am terrified to make a mistake or fail. So I won't innovate. I won't try new things. When he was a kid, every time he made a mistake, now this is a little more extreme than most of you had or or are doing with your kids. His father used to slap him on the head and say, genius. Oh, man. Now I had five PhDs, Harvard PhDs, who had the belief, I'm stupid. Mm. Mistakes and failures are bad, right? Kind of makes sense in a certain way. And, and I'm going to tell you a great story. I'm telling you my favorite story okay. about this belief uh-huh. and this and, and its brother. Mm. So most of us, when we spilled, dropped, or broke something, we're yelled at. Right. And so we conclude mistakes and failures are bad. Right. And if we had parents who withdrew, Mm. Then we say, if I make a mistake or fail, I'll be rejected. Right. Now, I'm going to take you through something in a minute. I'll play. I'll play a little bit with the process and see if we could do that. So this man uh, had a fear of public speaking. And we can get rid of that very quickly. Four sessions. It's like Mm. a no brainer. It's the only pattern that has the same beliefs for everybody. Most patterns, that's not true, but this one is. So I said to him, remember, in our process, we asked, doesn't it seem like you saw? So, sorry. So when his, when he made a mistake or he did something his father didn't like, his father stopped talking to him for days. Wow. So when I got to the part in the process, when I said, doesn't it seem like you saw If I make a mistake or fail, I will be rejected. And he said, I saw it every day of my life. And I said, remember, anything you could see has a color, shape, and location. And you can't see into the future. You can't see what's going to happen. So he says to me, but I did see it. But I did see it. But, But there's my father. But he's rejecting, you know, and you can't even see rejecting because he didn't put him up for adoption. He just stopped talking to him. So he kept, and finally, I don't know what I said or did, but I got him to get, he never saw it and the belief goes away. And then there's another part of the process, which we'll talk about before we get off meaning. Remind me, I have to talk about meaning. So the next day he goes to work and um, he's doing a presentation and somebody says, oh, wait, that's wrong. And he says, what do you mean? And he says, it's this. And he said, everybody listen up. What I just said was wrong. What Charlie just said was right. Charlie, could you please repeat what you just said? And then he turns around and he goes, Charlie, thank you for speaking up. I wouldn't have wanted anybody to walk out of here with the wrong information. And he goes on with his talk. (laughs) So it's funny. My daughter had just run the half Ironman Mm -hmm. and my other daughter and not Hawaii. And when she crossed the finish line, she she said she looked at us and she went, I am the shit. <laughs> so I had for some reason Love told it. him that story. And he's walking oh. to his office and he says, oh. I'm feeling like the shit. He said it was so cool. He goes into his office, the phone rings. 
It's the executive vice president of the company. And he says, I was in the room when you made that mistake. I was so impressed with how you handled it. Yeah. I'm putting you up for a promotion. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. You know, I, I can relate. I had a, a, a video I had shared on TikTok, a workout video, and somebody called me on something and I was like, they're right. Yeah, I was wrong. That's true. That was not that. And, and, and so I just, I was like, you know what? I was th I thought about it and you're, you're right. I, I was off on this. Thanks. And like the, one of the guys was like, wow, that was unusual. <laughs> I, I love you. You have to know I love you. You are so special. You see, if people would get what you do or don't do may interest people, but who you are inspires mm. them. Mm. You just inspired me because mm. that's who you are. That was my husband. Oh my, he woke up one morning and goes, I was wrong. It's not beliefs meaning, it's meaning beliefs meaning. And he runs to the computer and he goes, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, for me, a belief is an interesting thing when you're talking about knowing the truth. Cause I grew up in a very, very dogmatic religion, like borderline, bordering cults, very possible cult type religion. Right. And for me, it was, I knew everything. I had the truth that everybody else didn't have. And it was my job to tell everyone the truth. And like, this is very, you know, and so when that got ruptured, when I was 33 years old, it was like, oh, wow. Like I can get myself real deep in some belief systems and find out that that wasn't ever true. Like, and so it's created in me a sense of, it's not like every single person that, you know, I, I run it through, I call my filter of truth, but I kind of like being wrong. I kind of like being wrong because when I was wrong about that, my life got so much better. I mean, it was crazy for a while. When your sense of reality gets fractured, it's like, well, I don't know what anything is anymore. Like, you know, it's a lot to go through, but it also creates like, it's like when you see that your life gets so much better and you, you become more present. I like, I think how you're describing your husband of just this, it's, it's, it's like a softer, it's like ease. It's just, you can just be, you don't have yes. to fight for anything. It's just, you know, not that I don't ever get like that, but it's a tremendous sense of much deeper sense of like, it's okay. And actually I kind of like changing my beliefs because then I get to find out this whole new world that I might've been missing out on if I stayed so strict in what I know is the truth, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, sister. Yes. Yes. That's why when your kids make a mistake, you mm -hmm. yell, this is funny. You'll love this Tara. Learning opportunity. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. I think it was, um, Sarah, the, uh, who is it? What's the entrepreneur? I think she has like Sarah something. Oh my God. That's so embarrassing. I can't remember. She's like, a is it Spanx? I don't know. I can't remember what she owns. Anyway, I just heard her on a podcast, a pretty well-known female entrepreneur. And she said that every day at dinner, her dad would ask them, how did you fail today? Tell me one way you failed today. I was like, when she, now she's like this billionaire entrepreneur. I'm like, go what? figure. Oh, what was that? I yeah. love that. How did you tell me how you failed today? That's great. I like, I like though, um, my kids went to an alternative school and there was no such thing as mistakes and failures. There were only outcomes. Yeah. I, one, I, day, one day when I said to my, my daughter, learning opportunity, she said, mom, it's getting old. I, got it. <laughs> I, got I really, I, I resonate. I, I love that. It's only outcomes. I like that word for that. Yeah, I I've always what is failure, you know, that's a made up concept. I didn't do what I set out to do, but I know one more way to not cure cancer. Right. <laughs> I, I can't even resonate with the frequency of failure. Like I don't understand. I literally don't understand what people mean when yeah. they say that. Cause I'm like, no, but you learned like so much, <laughs> like, how, like, yeah, it's exactly, it's just this expectation, disappointment might not mean your expectation, but I, I just can't resonate with that at all. I'm like, I guess I, to me, it's only a failure if you feel like it was a failure. If you, you're going to label it that way and that's your belief. Okay. But it's like, no, it's not. Okay. So, all right. So going through, I want to make sure people have your resources, first of all. So we have recreateyourlife.com slash free is where, oh, no, 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 no. Eliminate, no, yeah. Eliminatebeliefs.com. Okay because then we can see if there's a bump and track it. And okay. Like let me have my editor cut this part out. Okay. So I'm going to re-ask that. 
Okay. I want to make sure that people know where they can find your resources. Where is the best place for people to go to? So um, eliminatebeliefs.com. Okay. Eliminatebeliefs.com. And there's three of the most common beliefs um, that people have that you can eliminate for free. And then if if you have that moment of like, oh my God, that was amazing. Um, there's a program called Natural Confidence mm-hmm. and it's 19 of the most common belief, including mistakes and failures are bad. If I make a mistake or fail, I'll be rejected. They're all on there. What makes me good enough is having other people think well of me. So um, what an amazing resource for coaches, right? Like the, the, oh. the, all sorts of coaches can just send their clients to, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to have my client, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have my clients try it out. Cause it's just, it's so nice to have that already done. Like you, what a wonderful accessory to any type of coach, mindset, coach, health coach, business coach, therapist, <laughs> right. I yeah. work with sexual abuse victims mm. and one session they get rid of beliefs like I'm powerless, I'm damaged goods, right. men hold the power, uh, women will hurt me. I worked with a psychiatrist whose mother abused him. Um, mm. Women will hurt me. Women have all the power. And he invited me to his wedding. He'd never had a successful relationship wow. in his life. He was a psychiatrist. Right? Right. So, you know, therapy Good therapy could be wonderful. It takes a long time, teaches you how to cope with lot with things. What we do is get rid of the beliefs so there's nothing to cope with. Right. Yeah. And I love this. You're 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 piquing my interest here with the uh, eliminating beliefs. I'm curious your process here. You're talking about it's like it's just gone. Cause I've always kind of been in the realm of like, okay, well, like what's another possible version of the story that could be true here. But this is, this is interesting. I'm, I'm going to dive in. I'm very curious what you've put together after decades of doing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We'll make sure we link that up in, in the notes. Um, let's see, let's do one last final question. I'm curious if you could share with the audience, like uh, what you said, patterns, patterns are the thing that you can observe, right? So, so like, what might you encourage people listening to observe in themselves, like certain key patterns that it's like, you definitely have some beliefs to one of these core beliefs, like going on the patterns in their life. I mean, obviously like not ever having a successful relationship, right. There's definitely some sort of story going on. <laughs> and and I, say, oh, oh, I want to, I want to give you a peep. I want to give your peeps a gift. Oh, yes. So, because you can't, and I'll answer that question, but you can't, you know, you, you're not walking away from this podcast, you know, saying, oh, I know how to eliminate my beliefs now, but <laughs> right. I did give you a way to, to do it. But I will give you a tool to play with mm. that will be life changing. But first, I want to answer the, the question. When you find yourself feeling that, oh, again, or mm. that, stuck feeling Mm. where you, and I'm going to talk about feelings in a minute, where you feel like like, I'm never going to get there or I'm never going to get this done. You hear yourself say things like I'm never, or I can't. Forget it. (laughs) I give up. (laughs) Right. Exactly. I, I, um, I don't stand up for myself. I am afraid to express myself. Mm. Uh, a big thing now that I work with people on is I want to put videos on TikTok or on yeah. whatever, and I can't. And <laughs> this is great. I worked with a woman who was perfectionist. That's a pattern, right? Perfectionism. Uh-huh. And it was so funny after three sessions, two sessions, she says, and she's in Qatar or Qatar, however you, mm-hmm. she says Qatar. And she said, Shelly, I put up a video and after I watched it, there was a hair on my sweater and I didn't redo it. <laughs> I so relate with my perfectionist class. I'm like, I wouldn't have even seen it. <laughs> I could say a couple words completely wrong and I just laugh. <laughs> I'm that's definitely not so a perfectionist. Great. That's so great. Well, thank God with four kids. That's a yeah. very, very, very good thing. Um, so. Everybody get ready for your, you know, now, if you've heard this, you, it won't blow your mind, but if you haven't, it will. Um, It's funny. I did this, uh, Mark Hyman had a feel good summit and I was the keynote. I opened it up every day 
And I did this with the audience. I had a half hour to do it. Um, and everybody said to me, don't take it all the way home. And I was not going to do that. And I looked at the audience and I said, I have too much respect for you to not do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you something, but I want your mind to not start screaming and going crazy. Just put it aside and say, well, maybe she has something and just listen. And then you could scream later. Okay. <clears throat> if somebody walks into a room that you know and doesn't speak to you, what might you automatically think? So before you answer, everybody answer. Okay, now answer. Um, they're busy. They're, they're shy. Busy. Okay. Yeah. They're busy. They're shy. Or, Some of you said they're rude. They don't like me. I did something wrong. Yeah. Uh, they're distracted. Whatever you just said is meaning. Hmm. Where did that meaning just come from? Core stories. <laughs> no. No. Where did the um, meaning come from? Mm, I said, where, the where, mind. Where, is that what exactly, you mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Meaning comes right. from your mind. We all overcomplicate things. Everybody mm -hmm. does that. Meaning is inside your head. They mm -hmm. don't like me. I did something wrong. I'm stupid. I'm never going to get there. It's this is a dangerous neighborhood. Meaning, meanings in yeah. your mind. Yeah. If meaning is in your mind, do events have inherent meaning? Do events have meaning? No. no. So I'm going to give you some extremes to make it real. And then I'm going to teach you how to use this. So mm -hmm. eliminate beliefs. You will not do this. You won't give meaning. You get rid of the belief dogs are dangerous and the dog comes into the room. You're not going to think it's going to bite me. Yeah, you're just neutral. And then you won't. So I'll make a statement, then I'll go back. All of your feelings come from the meaning you mm. give meaningless events. Mm. Most extreme, my husband died. I would give anything to have him back. I, he was amazing. He loved me. I loved him. We married 35 years. Right. So it's, mm -hmm. it's devastating. Mm -hmm. However, grieving is normal. Not wanting to get out of bed, not so good. Mm -hmm. So I use this technique every day. What happened? Mm -hmm. Morty died. What meaning did I give it? I'm going to starve to death because I don't know how to run a business. Mm -hmm. But people in front of me, I'm good. Run a business, not mm -hmm. interested. Well, it could mean that, but what else could it mean? Mm -hmm. It could mean you'll learn, right? I didn't know the mm -hmm. difference between a P&L and a balance sheet. My girlfriend taught me, right? She, every month mm -hmm. we would get on and do the financials. So, so the fact that he died, it isn't that it doesn't matter or it's no big deal. It has no inherent meaning. Mm -hmm. And another way of saying that is, I don't know anything for sure because it happened. Right. right. Next day, I don't want to get out of bed. What happened? Morty died. What meaning did you give it? I'm going to be alone forever. Well, mm -hmm. it could mean that. And it could mean there's a second act waiting to happen. But the fact that he died doesn't mean that. So that you could do it two ways. Anytime you have a negative emotion, if you just stop and get, my, there's a TEDx talk that Morty Lefko did. You can look it up, How to Stop Suffering. It teaches you this. The meaning's in my mind. It's not in the events. The events have no meaning. And then the emotion goes away. Or you can say, somebody cut me off. He's a jerk. Right. What else could it mean? He's going to the hospital. But it doesn't, we don't know anything because he cut me off, right? right. You know, the, what people scream at is Hitler, you know, Germany and Hitler, the, the Holocaust. What meaning does the Holocaust have? Well, Germans are horrible. Well, it could mean that. And it could mean that Nazis are horrible, not Germans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But the fact right. that that happened doesn't mean everybody hates Jews. It doesn't mean anything. Right. So if you bring it down to your everyday life, somebody walks into your office and walks by and doesn't say hello. Oh, they don't like me. <laughs> it could mean that, but it could mean other things. Right. 
Yeah. Being able to shift that in your mind is so powerful. And we have those automatic ch- responses to triggers, right? It's just because like, the if meaning comes from the, the beliefs, get right. rid of the belief, you won't give the meaning. Beautiful. Thank you so much for walking us through that and helping us get an idea of what that process looks like. It's like questioning those, the meaning, it, there could be so many meanings, you know? So I love that. Thank you so much. And we'll link up everything that you shared um, so they can find those resources. Thank you so much for that. And um, again, uh, social media, you have social media too, correct? And they yep. find you on social mm-hmm. Yeah. Facebook and, you know, just Shelly Lefko is basically. Shelly Lefko. Okay, guys. Yeah. Shelly, thank you so much. You're such a bright light in this oh. space. You have such a powerful way of delivering the message. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with my audience today. Thanks for having me. I loved being with you. You're an amazing interviewer. Thank you.